kingdom giving kutoa katika ufalme wa Mungu This is a very important principle in the kingdom of God It is a principle in the kingdom of God The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 3:9 that you bless God with your possessions. The Bible says, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of your increase. There is no season, brethren, that undermines the principle of giving to God. There is no season that you can overrule giving to the kingdom of God. Giving pleases God. And giving to God has changed men's life on earth. Right from the days of our forefathers. And it began one of our forefathers, our father Abraham. The greatness of Abraham was in giving to God. We cannot discount that truth. It was not in fasting for 40 days. The greatness of Abraham was giving to God. Prayer and fasting is a principle too. It has its own benefits in the kingdom. When we go out for evangelism and winning souls is a principle too. It brings back its fruits upon us. That is why the word of God says that when we honor God, some will get a hundredfold, some will get sixtyfold, and others will get thirtyfold. There are people who think, just because I pray so much, I don't need to give. My praying is enough. You will get the percentage of 30%. Probably you will have embraced prayer, you will have embraced evangelism, and still given to God. So that you have your hundred percent. Who are these who get a hundredfold? I believe these are the ones who have obeyed the whole principles of God. Not those ones who took one area of the principle of God. Praise the Lord. Not those ones who embraced one principles of God. They say we go out and win souls. We don't need to give to God anymore. We don't need to pray. These principles have their benefits. And any Christians who want to have a hundredfold must embrace the principles that God has given us. And this is one of the most important principles. And this principle will transform your lives. And the very important thing is this. When we give to God, it transforms our lives and the generations that will come. It is not just for you today. When we sow our seed for the glory of God, it will transform our lives, the seeds that will come out of us, and the generations that will follow us. I know this principle has been abused by selfish men who preach giving for their selfish interests. There are televisions who preach giving throughout, and they are lying to people and telling them how they should sow seeds. And then you should be very careful knowing where to sow your seed. But the fact that this principle has been abused by those who do it wrongly does not mean it is not the truth and the principle of God. Those who sow rightly and according to God's word and commandment, they shall reap their fruits. They will sow and they will reap. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us open the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 8. Watu ambao wanatoa kwa sababu ya ufalme wa Bwana wanatolea Mungu hawatoi tu kwa sababu ya maisha yao lakini wanatoa kwa sababu ya vizazi vyao vizazi vitakavyokuja baadaye vitaweza kunufaika na matoleo na sadaka ambazo wazazi wao walitoa wengi wetu tunapitia mateso katika maisha kwa sababu bengi ambazo baba zetu waliweka hazina hazina yoyote ziko bure in fact 
wengi wetu tumezaliwa katika familia ambayo bengi za maisha yetu ni negative wazazi wetu badala ya ku, uh, kutoa sadaka kwa madhabahu ya Mungu walitoa sadaka kwa madhabahu ya giza na madhabahu haya yakaleta uharibifu mwingi katika maisha ya watu wengi kwa hivyo sisi tunapoanza kwenda kwa Mungu tujenge madhabahu mapya inakuwa kwamba lazima tujaze pengo ambalo lilitawekwa uh, na wazazi wetu lakini mtu ambaye amezaliwa kwenye kizazi ambacho wazazi wake walikuwa wanatoa sadaka ambazo zimekubalika mbele ya Bwana hauwezi kupigana na mtu huyu kamshinda hauwezi kufika kiwango chako chake ni vigumu sana rafiki yangu ndio sababu unaona katika dunia kuna watu ambao wanakaa ni kama maisha yao yako very favorable kuliko wengine hata kama wakati mwingine si wa Kristo wengine hata waingii kanisani na unashangaa kwa nini wewe ambaye unaomba sana wewe ambaye unaingia kanisani sana wewe ambaye unafunga sana maisha yako yanakaa kidogo na majaribu na mateso mengi lakini unaweza kufuatilia maisha ya mtu huyu huenda anaishi maisha ambayo hayana sana shida huenda wazazi wake ama wazazi wa wazazi wake walikuwa na hazina ndele ya Bwana unajua ninaweza kuwa mchungaji lakini nizae mtoto ambaye anaweza kataa kumwa kumwabudu Mungu na akaanza kuishi maisha yake lakini kumbuka kwa sababu ametoka kwa uzao wangu baraka ambazo Bwana aliweka kwa uzao wangu zitafata mtu huyu tu kwa hivyo mtoto huyu ata benefit kutoka kwa kofa kwa bank account yangu kwa hivyo unaweza kuwa na mtoto ambaye alitoka ndani mwako na kiunoni mwako na ukakuwa mtumishi mzuri wa Bwana lakini ulipanda mbegu nzuri mtoto huyu anaweza ishi maisha ambayo haya na mateso mengi lakini akumbuke kwamba akikataa Mungu bado atahukumiwa tu lakini katika dunia huenda anaweza kama maisha ambayo iko better and lighter than others praise the name of jesus so when you see familia ambazo zinakaa afadhali maishani wakati mwingine wacha kuanza kuhukumu Mungu na kusema angalia hawa hawaombi kila siku wanakunywa pombe lakini wamejaa na pesa na magari huenda kuna mtu ambaye alifanya kazi ndani ya maisha yao Wakristo wengi wana struggle makanisani mwetu na kila wakati wanatarajia kutoka Haka, wakati mwingine hata wakristo wengine wanapotoa sadaka hapa kwa madhabahu wanakuja na macho yao wamefungua kama ya tai anakuja polepole pole, anaangalia yeye amebeba zake ishirini lakini anaangalia maelfu hapa anasema baada ya ibada nitakaa pale lazima hizi maelfu niendeko na mbili hii mentality imetuua na sikatai wapendwa katika kanisa la Mungu lazima tuonyeshe upendo lazima tuweze kutake care wale ambao wana mahitaji vile Mungu ametusaidia na katika hata kanisa la kitambo that was there when you read the book of acts chapter 6 tunaona manabii wa Mungu maapostle wakisema wacha tufungue hii desk watu wengine wahudumie watu hawa which means kulikuwa na account ya kuweza kuhudumia wamama wajane na maskini katika kanisa. Na saa hii kanisa lolote la Kristo lazima liwe na kitengo cha kuweza kuhudumia watu maskini kwa sababu liko katika neno la Bwana. Kile ulichotendea wale ambao ni wadhaifu ulinitendea mimi. Lakini sasa watu wamebadilisha. Wengi wanazama ndani hata wale ambao hawahitaji msaada kila wakati wanataka wapewe msaada msaada lakini wame, wameacha maandiko It is more blessed to give than to receive Na hata sasa tunainua kizazi ambacho ni kizazi cha ajabu Ni kizazi ambacho kinaamini kwa kudanganywa na uongo kuliko kuamini ukweli kuna watu ambao wanatuma pesa mingi sana katika televisheni. Lakini ule anayewalisha neno hawawezi kuleta kwa madhabahu. Lakini kama wewe unasoma maandiko na unaelewa, Abrahamu hakutoa sadaka yake kila mahali, alitoa kwa madhabahu. Wacha tufungue kitabu cha Genesis chapter 8. Tuanzie pale pengine mtu anaweza sema naongea tu, mchungaji leo anataka kututoanisha. Sasa lazima Atu, atupime vizuri fungua genesis 8 20 
Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took every clean animal. Somebody say clean. Did he take any other animal? Did he take just animals? The Bible says Noah took clean animal. That means there were animals that were worthy. There are animals that were costly. There were animals that had glory. And every clean bird and offered offerings on the altar. Somebody say on the altar. Where did Noah offer the offering? And that means there were dirty birds. There were dirty animals. Noah was a servant of God. And every servant of God must understand that unaweza kuwa na sadaka lakini sio kila sadaka ni safi. Unaweza kuwa na sadaka chafu. Na baadhi ya njia ambayo sadaka inachafuliwa ni kutolea Mungu sadaka isiyokuwa na dhamana. Inao madharau. Then when Noah offered the sacrifice to God, what happened? Somebody read, read with me. Go to verse 21. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Mtu anasema, Mungu huyu ni mkubwa na kila kitu binguni. Kwa ana anahitaji mimi ni mchinjie ngombe, anuse, ndiye anibariki. Ni kwa sababu hauna ufunuo. Kwa ni Mungu huyu na hizo dhahabu ako nazo zote? Kwa ana anahitaji mimi, lazima nimtolee pesa ndiye anibariki. Kwa ni Mungu huyu ako selfish aje? The Lord said he in his heart I will never again cast the ground of man for uh, for man's sake although the imagination of man's heart is evil from the, his youth nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done and there is a statement that he said that while the earth remains seed time and harvest will not Cease. I've jumped the other words. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest will not cease. There will be a time for you to sow and there will be a time for you to reap. It is still ongoing because the earth still remains even today. But there are many people who want to harvest what they have never sown. There are many people with expectations of great harvest, but they have sown nothing. So what is happening to many people because they have not understood this revelation, they are frustrated, thinking that God has left them to suffer. But God cannot go against his word. He said it, he walked with our fathers from the beginning. They did it and God blessed them. You will not begin today that God will change his word for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. See the time and have his time. So Noah built an altar from, to God. And he offered clean animals to the Lord and to the altar. I want to tell you something. Kuna wakati watu wanaingia kanisani and people say God. Say a word. People pray and say, speak a word concerning my situation. The Bible say, when God smelled the sweet smelling aroma of the sacrifice of Noah, he said in his heart, when you give to God and on his altar an acceptable sacrifice, God says something concerning you. If God doesn't say anything, you are praying and God is quiet. You are fasting and God is quiet. Go and offer a worthy sacrifice on his altar. He will say. He will speak. Lord, give me a job. He's quiet. You go fast. Lord, open a door for a job. He's quiet. Take a worthy sacrifice. Go and give to God. He will speak in his heart. I will never leave him jobless. I will give him a job. Because of the sacrifice, God will speak. God is not speaking in people's lives because these people have never desired to sacrifice to God. 
People have never desired to honor God with their increase and with their possessions. These days, Christians' possessions are theirs. Recently, I was listening to a man of God who was saying this statement. And he said this, that on the national level, wakati sirikali inaitisha michango kwa sababu ya situations ambazo zinatendeka. Wakati watu wetu wanakufa njaa. Na tunaona kwenye runinga. Eh? Wa Kristo wanakuja kanisani wanaanza kuomba. Bwana, saidia watu wa North Eastern, leta mvua. Lakini waina, waindi wanaenda wanafungua bank account zao. Wanatuma milioni. Wanasema mwendeni muwasaidie. Sisi tumekuja tunarabashanta hakapoze Mungu fungua mvua na hakuna shida. Lakini mifuko zetu tumeweka loko. Kam. Kamfungua hapa. Muhindi ambaye haamini Mungu hataenda kwa kanisa. Atapiga simu. Anasema ninatuma milioni mbili msaidie hawa watu. Ni nani ambaye amefulfill the principle ya Mungu? Ni nani anapokea baraka? Ndio unasema sasa Wahindi wamechukua ekonomi yetu yote. Wao ndio wana mashamba makubwa, wao ndio wana makazi ma, ma, ma makubwa, wholesale kubwa, supermarkets kubwa, hardware kubwa. Lakini sisi tunaenda kwa milima kufunga siku 21 days prayer and fasting. Lakini mikono yetu stingi. Utapata revelation, utaona malaika, utaona Kristo, utaona vile umekaa na yeye, utarudi nyumbani London na kufungia nyumba rafiki. Kwa sababu umeembrace the principle ya prayer unapokea baraka na fruit ya prayer lakini hii ingine hmm? utaombea watu wakianguka chini utafufua mufu utamwambia wewe mufu amka mufu anaamka hivi watu wanasema haleluya unarudi nyumbani hata gari hauna mbingu imefunga pshu, pesa hauna wapendwa hizi 50 50 na 100 zitatumaliza tumejaza madhabahu ya Mungu na 50 50 na 100 na 2020 Baraka zetu nazo zinakuja 50 50 na 100 100 na 2020. 20. Ah, sababu niacha nihubiri neno la Mungu kwa roho na kweli. Niacha niwaambie ukweli. Ukikuja hapa, mimi huwa nakaa wakati mwingine nikihesabu sadaka. Wapendwa sio ubaya kutoa 50, lakini si, si upandishe kiwango. Miaka 20 50 50. Surely Mungu aendelee kukupa 50 50 watoto wamefika watano ulikuwa unatoa 50 50 ukiwa na mtoto mmoja baada watoto ni watano 50 50 baraka ya 50 itakuwezesha kusomesha watoto watano eh shida zenye unapata ukiwa na watoto watano zinaweza kusababishwa ku, kuondolewa na 50 50 inafaa wakati baraka yako inanuliwa na wewe inua kiwango ulikuwa unatoa 50 anza kukataa toa mia mbili toa elfu moja toa elfu kumi kwa nini nyinyi hamwezi kuandika check za 100,000 mlete kwa madhabahu haya mubarikiwe na haya si madhabahu ya uongo hakuna unafiki wa kuibia watu pesa hapa mimi sina tamaa ya pesa zenu mimi tamaa yangu ni mapenzi ya Mungu yakatendeke mimi hata mshahara siupati nina mshahara wangu tayari na nashukuru Mungu. Ile hali Biblia inasema kwamba msitufinye midomo wakati sisi ndio tunaohudumia. Tutakula kwenye nyinyi. Do not muscle the bull. Si ni ukweli? Eh? The Levites ate from the altar because their work was to be there and God permits it. But because of the economical times, squeeze. Ha, ukianza kukula hapo nini itatendeka kanisani? Hata bills hazitalipwa. Kwa sababu tumejaza madhabahu na ma 50 2020 na den den. Now, kinachoshangaza ni hiki. Kwa madhabahu ya Mungu unatoa finje finje. Kwa mganda elfu moja. Kwa matanga elfu tatu. Sasa Mungu wako ni wa madhabahu haya ama Mungu wako ni wa matanga? Mungu wako wa madhabahu haya ama Mungu wako ni wa mganda? Kwa madhabahu ya Mungu 50-50. Nyinyi mnafikiria Mungu sio mathematics, mathematicians? Ah, enda uliza Ananias bwana. 
Ukifikiria Mungu sio mathematics, uliza Ananias. Alifanyaje? Alipiga hesabu, Mungu anaona. God is very careful about the money you have. You think it's yours. God can kill you with your money. Mungu anaweza kukua kwa sababu ya pesa zako. Aliua Ananias. Na huyu Mungu ambaye alifanya kazi siku za Petero ndio Mungu tunaabudu leo. Si eti Mungu amepinduka akabadilika. Kazi ya Mungu inateseka katika dunia tunayokaa. Injili haifiki watu. Na injili ya Mungu lazima ihubiriwe katika u, 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 fullness yake. Kuna mahali tutaenda tuweke mitambo tuhubiri injili na watu wasikie. Kuna mahali hatutaenda na mitambo tutabeba lori ya vyakula. Tuambie watu kujeni mchukue sukari chukue nini baadaye nasema simameni hapo hokokeni atuhubiri wanasema ndio huyu Mungu anayetupatia chakula ndio Mungu When God had eaten the sacrifice he spoke We see that in the book of Genesis also chapter 18 verse 6 Abraham is very old God has promised him a child But when you read from verse 1 there the Bible say Abraham alikuwa ameketi kwenye mti wake in one of the afternoon Anabarizi tu Sijui Abraham alikuwa anapiga hesabu gani Lakini alipopiga macho yake akaona wana, watu wangapi wanaume wangapi watatu Abraham akapassive hawa sio watu wa kawaida Biblia inasema akakimbia kwenda kuwakutanisha akamwambia njooni muingie kwa nyumba yangu angalau ni muoshe miguu na mpate hata kama ni mkate mkule unajua siku zile tradition ya wayahudi mgeni akiingia kwako alikuwa anaoshwa miguu ni kwa sababu siku zile kumbuka Israeli ni mahali ambapo ni jangwa kwa hivyo mchanga uko mingi sana na hakukuwa na closed shoes kama za siku hizi So watu walikuwa wanatembea kwa mchanga kwa hivyo akiingia utapata migui hii yote ni mchanga dust kama saa hii kwa hivyo walipoingia Abraham akaingia akakimbia kwa Sara jikoni akamwambia Sara jitahirishe tengeneza mkate akaenda akaambia savandu wake tengeneza nyama mzuri kondoo mzuri msafi kondoo mzuri msafi kibia utengeneza haraka The servant akaenda akatengeneza kondomu mzuri. Naye Sara kwa jikoni akajitahidi kutengeneza mkate. Wakaenda wakaleta. Abraham mwenyewe akabeba akaleta kwa wageni sio Sara alileta. Mm -mm. Kwa sababu Sara alikuwa kwa jikoni hakuleta. Ni Abraham alileta. Abraham alipoleta akawekea wale wageni watatu chakula. Biblia inasema hakuondoka pale alikaa pale na kuona vile wanakula waliposhiba na hawa wako wanadamu it was god the father god the son and god the holy spirit walipomaliza wakauliza sara yuko wapi akasema ako jikoni huko lakini sara penye yuko naye anasikiza pia unajua mama vile wanakuanga mama mko kwenye kwa nyumba Mgeni mwenye ameingia na ameingia kwa nyumba yako na umjui. Mnajua vile mnajifichanga bedroom lakini mnazima simu kila kitu. Mnasikia wameongea nini? Wamama mnajua huenda wanafanya transaction ya pesa ndio ujua ana pesa wanaongea nini? Unapiga watoto ambao nini mcheza haraka? Unataka kusikia wanaongea nini? Sara alikuwa anasikiza. Wakamwambia mwaka ujao wakati kama huu tutakaporudi hapa Sara atakuwa na mtoto. Sara penye yako akacheka bwana. Anasema leo tumetembelewa na wageni ambao huenda hawaelewi hali yangu. Lakini Abraham ambaye alitoa sacrifice alijua. Wakati Mungu anashiba hawezi nyamaza ataongea wakati mwingine wazazi wacha nikwambie usibariki tu mtoto wacha afanye jambo ndio baraka zake zikae permanent ni hekima ya Mungu baraka zinazopewa mtu bure zinaondoka bure 
Wengi wenu hapa hamwezi kupokea neema Mungu amenipatia kwa sababu hamjajua vile mnaweza panda. Hamjajua. I hold the grace that a man of God in Holy Gate how? Where? How do you hold it? How do you have it? Is it working for you? <laughs> Are you operating like him? Wakati unatolea Mungu dhabihu inaongea. Nimekuja kukuhubiria mahubiri ya covenant giving. Giving that will provoke God for eternity to bless you and for whom God blesses is blessed. For whom God lifts is lifted. For whom God favors is favored. For whom God honors is honored. I have not come here. When you give to God, you are not favoring God. Never give in the church because you are favoring a pastor. I don't have your blessing. I can only bless you with what God has given me. When I speak to you, it is the grace God has accorded me. When I bless you, it's the grace God has accorded me. Because I receive from the Lord, I give it to you. Because it is the channels of God. You have tuned in into the transmissions of heaven. You will receive. You can never get what is in my bowels. The grace of God that is in my bowels. Free. Let me give you some types of giving. We've, we finish this matter. Number one. Kingdom investment. Giving to the household of God. Kupeana kwa sababu ya kazi ya mungu. This includes tithes, offerings, supporting church projects. Giving for projects like evangelism, kingdom advancements. Giving in the house of God. And this is not doing favor to God. Usiwai leta sadaka kwa sababu unaurumia mungu. Mungu si wakurumiwa. Na ukikata, buwana atainua watu wengine wafanyi. Kwa hivyo unapotolea mungu, unatolea mungu kwa baraka zako na uzazi, uza wako. And you must know that God has given you that money and you, it is your responsibility to sow it in his kingdom. If you don't, for whom more is given, more will be required. When you will stand before God, it will not be how much houses you build, how much cars you had, how much investments you had on earth. It is what you did in the kingdom of God. It is your responsibility. The Bible says, in heaven you must have an account. So heaven has an account. And the account is for you. When you read the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 15. The Bible says in Philippians 4 15, Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. Continue. For even in the Solonike, ye send once again unto my necessity. Go on, continue. Not because I desire a gift. Not because I desire your gifts. But I desire fruit that may abound to your account. That I desire that fruit may abound to your account. So there is an account. Kwa hivyo kuna account yako ya kiroho. Paula anasema si waambi mtoe kwa sababu mimi nahitaji sadaka zenu. Lakini ninataka mtoe kwa sababu matunda yakaweze kuwekwa kwa account zenu. Kwa hivyo kila mtu hapa una account yako. Na vile unamtolea Mungu account yako inaongea. Na hiyo account ndio ina provoke the riches of God to come to you. Kama account yako ni zero. Kama account yako uwa inapigia tu 50-50. That is how the heaven is provoked to give you back 50-50. So there is an account. This is kingdom investment. Now, kuna watu hata fungu la kumi. Kilicho kitakatifu cha mungu. Hautoi kwa waminifu. Unakikula. Wacha hata sadaka. Fungu la kumi. Bwana amesema hii ni takatifu kwangu. Nimekupatia asilimia 90. Lakini hii ni toleeni. Hiyo pia unakula. Wakati tunaenda evangelism unatuma 50. Wakati mwingine unasema hiyo sio hata nini ya kutoa. Kwani ni lazima tuende? 
we have spiritual accounts that provoke the wealth of God to be deposited on them. But those spiritual accounts are there, but they can only provoke what you give. Ukienda kwenye bengi, kuna watu ambao wana mamilioni mingi kwenye bengi. Lakini kuna watu wana bengi ambayo wakona 10 shillings, 1,000 ziko pale. The spiritual realm also has the same. There are people with great wealth because they have sown so much in the kingdom of God. Peter asked Jesus, see, we have left everything to follow you. What are we going to receive? What did Jesus answer him in the book of Matthew 19, 27, 29? Matthew 19, 29. Lord, we have left everything. Tumeacha kila kitu, tumekukujia buwana. Tume, tutapokea nini? Yesu wakamjibu nini? And everyone who has left his houses, his brothers, sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive what? Everlasting life. Shall receive what? And then what will be added to him? Will inherit eternal life. Which means... Giving can provoke even a sinner to be saved. Is it true? Giving can provoke a wicked man for God to save him. Kuna watu, God has literally forcefully put in his kingdom and saved them. Literally. They have not because they did something that just pleased the heart of God. They were not born again. But they did something that provoked the heart of God. We have seen it in the Bible. Where God sends his apostles to a man, to St. Julian. A man who has been doing good, but he's not born again. And God sends apostles, go and preach to him. Go and bring that family in my kingdom. They are worthy because they have been soaring seeds to me. Kuna watu ambao walifufuliwa kwa sababu ya matendo mazuri ya kutoa. Wakina Dorcas. Sadaka zetu, fungu la kumi zetu, pesa tunazo toa katika kujenga ufalme wa mungu. Hizi pesa ni hazina ambazo tunaweka kwa bengi yetu. Na neno la mungu linasema kwamba afadhali wanaweka hazina zao kwenye bengi za mbinguni. Ambapo hakuna vitu vya kukula, hakuna panya, hakuna wezi, hakuna watu ambao wataingia ndani na kuiba. Wakati there is a need in the church, in the heaven realm, that is an opportunity to promote somebody. Kwa hivyo kama kuna hitaji kanisani, mchungaji anapo simama kusema, kuna hitaji hii, kuna watu wanaanza kuangaliana. Wanasema ni nani atawakua, wanajua na nindi atafanya. Lakini mungu na ya na muangaliana, wanasema ni wewe, ni wewe ni nataka kubariki, ni wewe ni nataka kuinua, ni wewe ni nataka kufuta lahana za uzazi wenu, ni wewe ni nataka kuondolea lahana ya umaskini, lakini haujui ngo, Wakati hitaji linakuja kanisani It is you God is purposing to bless It is an opportunity to promote you It is an opportunity to give you the keys To provoke God's blessing to you and your generation But many of us have abdicated Yani tunaona sisi atuwezi Hata nikita hapa watu tuje tutoe You will see how people will behave Because they think they don't need to give to God But their lives are poor Their lives are struggling They are full of sickness They are full of attack Mbaka tumeishi maisha kwa ukristo Tunategemea wasio mjua mungu Tukua na shida hawa ndio tunapigia shida Tunalilia watu watupe chakula kwa manyumba zetu Lakini tumeksa hao Ni sadaka yetu itatutetea Mtu ambaye anapanda mkate kwa nyumba ya mungu Hawezi enda kubegi mkate Kule Daudi ya kasema I have been young and I'm old I have not seen uh, those who saw in God's kingdom Beg for bread on the street It is not possible I believe the word of God in entirety I don't doubt If you give your seed and plant on God's altar You will not beg for bread on the street You will not You will not be a laughing stock you can only be a laughing stock in the beginning. But at the end, those who laughed at you will bow at you before you. Because the seed will speak. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, the seed will speak. Number two. I said number one is kingdom. Number two is prophetic offering. Matthew 10, 41 says, 
He who receives a prophet, in the name of a prophet, receives the prophet's reward. He who receives a righteous man, in the name of a righteous man, receives the righteous man's reward. Kuna sadaka unaweza kubeba na uende utie kwa mikono ya nabii wako. Na hii ndio sadaka ambayo ina provoke the grace ya huyo nabii ambayo Mungu amempatia ianze kuwekwa kwa account yako. Na hapa ndipo other men of God have misused the grace. But this is the truth. It's scriptural. There are people in the church who can be in the church for 10 years. But your life is still a joke. Hakuna mtu anaweza. Kama Mungu anaweza bariki watu ambao hawajaokoka. Kwa sababu wanamtolea. Kwa sababu ni principle yake. Wewe ambaye uko kanisani mwake unaweza toa Bwana kusahau. Yawezekana namna gani? Mungu anaweza sahau mbegu yake kweli. Si ni kwa sababu umefunga mkono wako. Ni kwa sababu unaona shida zako, unaona rent hujalipa. Unaona shida zako na kila wakati zinaongezeka zikiongezeka hazijai kwa sawa. Kuna watu kanisani hawawezi kupokea neema ya mchungaji. Hawajawahi kwenda kufikiria wakasema leo hii naenda kutia kwa mikono ya pasta. Hata hii sitapeleka kwa madhabahu. Hii naenda tu kutia kwa mikono ya pasta. Neema yake inifanyie kazi. The third giving which is the second last is called seed faith. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Seed faith is built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Vile mbegu haiwezi kuzalisha mpaka ifanye nini? Ipandwe na ikufe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Yesu alipandwa kama mbegu na akakufa na akafufuka. Kwa hivyo seed faith ni ambapo mbegu inapandwa, inakufa na inapofufuka, inafufuka ikuwa upya na multiplied and better than what it was. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Ukisikia tunakuita kuja upande mbegu, seed faith is where unaelewa unapeana kwa nini. Unaleta mbegu, you plant the seed, you sow the seed. And what happens? The Bible says except a corn of wheat dies, it abides alone. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwa hivyo pia mbegu seed is another giving in the kingdom of God and is very very powerful. Kwa hivyo mtu anaweza amua naenda kupanda mbegu kwa sababu ya shida fulani. Na seed faith inafanya kazi namna hii. Unaweza kuwa kuna shida umeiombea. Umeiombea kwa wakati mrefu haiondoki. Umejaribu kufanya ile haliondoki, utaizika na mbegu. Kuna kitu unataka kuua maishani mwako ambacho kinakusumbua sumbua. Na sijasema uende uwe wa Kristo wengine. Come and give a seed according to the knowledge and understanding of God. Bring a seed and say, Lord, I'm planting this as a seed. You see. There is a man of God I was listening to. And he said he prayed. Actually, he was, his name is Chris Oyekilome. He was going for a mission in Canada. But for a whole week, he was experiencing great pain in his body. He said he fasted, he did not go. He prayed on his knees, he did not go. For you who know Chris Oyekilome, he's a man of God moving with great power of healing. He lied on his stomach, he did not go. For many days, the pain was still there and it was not going. And the, the mission was almost getting closer. He said, what do I do? So one day, he was seated speaking to another man of God and just sharing the word of God. They were just talking. Then as the man of God whom we, his friend was leaving, Chris said, Pastor Chris said, go, he sent his servant and said, bring me the Mercedes S-Class. He had just driven it a few weeks. And he said, he told the man of God, don't go, hold on. He said, this is, the man of God said, what? He said, this is your key, for what? This is your car, which car? I am giving you this car. The man of God who was receiving could not believe that he was being given a Mercedes S-Class. And Pastor Chris says, when this man took the key and he entered into the car, as he started to drive away the S-Class, 
he started to feel the sickness leave his body. And the sickness left his body and it went and it has never come back again. There is power in sowing a seed. And a seed is not something cheap that you just bring. And finally, because of time, the final giving, there are many others that I want to share with you, is giving to the poor, the needy, or the needy in the church. Giving to the poor and the needy in the church. Those are three, four categories that I want you to know. Very, very major ones. Matthew 25, 34. Give me that scripture. will be the, the final part as we finish. Matthew 30, 25, verse 34. Then the king will say to those who on his right hand, Come, you who, you blessed of my father. They were on which right side of the Lord? Right hand side. Ukika mbe mkono wakulia wabuwa na juo ukosawa. Wewe umesha kubalika. Lakini left, boss, wewe unaondolewa. The king said to those who are on his right hand, Come you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Hmm? Continue. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Continue. And I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Continue. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? Continue. When did we see you stranger and take you in? Or naked and clothe you. Continue. Or when did we see you sick in prison and come to you? Uh -huh. And the king will answer and say to them. Can we read all that? All of us. Let's start from assuredly. Assuredly, I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of this list of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Giving to the needy, to the least, to the poor is a promise of God. This will cause honor in your life. That is why in our ministry we have created the ministry of love. Which we need to put our money there that we may help the needy, the less fortunate, the people who are still struggling in life. We have a love ministry which our brother Silas is the one who is managing it. In that love ministry, we, we try our best. We pay school fees for the needy. We offer food. You have seen us give Christmas food, sometimes Easter. We buy food for the needy. You have seen us give clothing to people here in this church. You have seen us go to the streets to give food to the street children. Are we doing that because we are showing off? No. We are fulfilling the word of God. When you give your sacrifices to the needy, you are building your wealth base. You are building your honor. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 112 verse 9, your righteousness will endure forever. Your honor will be exalted. You will be exalted with honor when you give to the poor. Psalms 112 verse 9, your righteousness will endure forever. Your horn will be exalted with honor. He, he has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted with honor. Unajua uneza kuja kanisani wapendwa. Umesimama hapo penye umekaa. Tunamaliza ibada usijali. Najua ingine msha kuwa impatient. Eh? Brother Tiangu vile umekaa hivi. Aya, tunasema haya, tuombe maitaji yetu. Tunaomba lakini masikia ijafunga. Si tunasikia maombi ya wengine. Baba, mtoto wangu aende shule school fees. Na wewe hapa unaomba Mungu nataka nyumba ya 10 million. Lakini kwa nyumba huko na kamilioni kamoja hivi si ndio? Suondoe hii jam. Eh? Immediately mnamaliza maombi unawaambia school fees ni pesa ngapi? 20,000. Usiombe tena. Yani umeondoa jam. Kama mungu ingekua line imepangwa hivi. 
Watu wako mbele huyu rent. Huyu ni school fees. Huyu ni chakula. Unaondoa jam. Unakuwa next. Unachukua rent unalipa. Unalipa school fees. Unapeana chakula na unaondoa jam na wewe unakuwa next. The easiest way ya kusongea mbele ya Mungu na baraka zako Bwana ailete haraka. And your righteousness to be fulfilled. You are horn to be exalted with honor. Give to the poor. Bible inasema in the book of John, first John chapter 3. Wewe unajiita mkristo ambaye unajua Mungu. Na hata mahitaji ya wapendwa ndugu zako ambao wako karibu na wewe. Unaambia enda Mungu atakusaidia. Enda kwa amani, Mungu atafanya nini? Mungu akusaidie. Enda tu kwa amani. First John 3:17. Enda tu usijali lazima tuweze kupeana sadaka zetu kwa maskini na Mungu atatusaidia Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana Finally as I finish in the book of Matthew 19:21 there is a man who came to Jesus and he asked the Lord what can I do to inherit the kingdom of God and Jesus said, go and obey the commandments that were given to you by Moses. The man said, I have done all of those. And Jesus looked at this man and he said, go and sell all your wealth and give to the poor. Then come and follow me and you will inherit the kingdom of God. <laughs> Did the man do it? That means there is a high correlation between inheriting the kingdom of God and giving to the poor. Am I lying? There is a high correlation. Kwa kiswahili na manisha, kuna usiano mkubwa sana katika mtu ambaye anapatia na kusaidia maskini na kupokea ufalme wa buwana. Ndiyo nilisema kwamba mtu ambaye anapeana kwa maskini, mungu hata muacha, mungu hata muokoa. Watu wa dunia wako very active huku nje. Juzi tumesikia kwa television. Kulikuwa na mtoto hapa mpeli. Muliona? Wakaeka hui mtoto amepata 402 na amerudisha shuleni hapa. Kwa sababu hakuna mtu wa kuwasaidia. By the virtue of my office, ile reporti kanifikia. Tukakimbia hapa mbio, kapata huyo mtoto, tukaweza kusaidia mtoto, nikasaidia mama shopping na mambo mengine. Lakini hule mama si alikuwa tajiri wapendwa. Baada hiyo wakina sonko, akina nani, kutoka Nairobi, walipoona hiyo vitu kwa, huyo mama kwa wapi? Hile simu ya mama ilikuwa marketable, yani kila mtu anataka kumsaidia. Na watu walikuwa napiga simu ni watu wa dunia. Watu ambao tunaitanga waovu. Hawa ndiyo wanaona shida ya maskini. Wanakimbia kufanya nini? Kidogo tunasikia principal Ashula anasema. Uyo anasoma bure. Na sisi tukamambia siyo bure. Tunakuja na pesa na tunalipa na anaingia. Na tukachukua uyo mama asubui. Tukaweka kwa ofisi yetu tukafunga. Tukasema aendi pali. Tukatafuta gari. Tukaweka na driver na mafuta Na school fees yote na shopping Tukasema mbaka shule Na usimame hivi Watu wapige picha Tuseme sisi ndio tumefanya nini Tumelipa Na hiyo story isha hapa Na ilifanyika hivo Yani watu wa dunia They know how to seize opportunity Ya kubarikiwa Lakini wakanisa ah, hey. Mungu atawasaidia Nataka kumaliza mahali ambapo wengi munaenda kukasirika. Tunaenda evangelism. Nasema, ah, ndiyo hiyo sasa pasta litubiria injini. Sasa ndiyo hii. Wapendo wa mwaka hotu waitaji pesa kubwa sana. Tayari. Tunataka kuvuka mipaka tunaingia Uganda mwaka huu. Kuenda kufanya evangelism kule. Ile siku tuliongea hapa na mchu, uh, asubui na watenda kazi. Tukaelewana kwamba. 
Naona Mungu akituelekeza kuingia Uganda mwaka huu. Among the places tunaenda. Next day, Pasta Ushinda anasema niko Uganda na ninaona ni kama tukuje huku tufanye mkutano. Na Rwanda, Burundi I mean. So tayari alishawaongelesha wanapanga wananiambia niwapigie simu niwaambie siku gani they are getting ready for us. Now people of God. Unajua wakati sisi tunaenda kama Uganda wale watu wanatuona kama sisi ni nani? Yaani tunajiweza mpaka hata tutaweza kuwalundia wachungaji vyakula na kila kitu. Sasa ile maneno ananiambia nikasema sasa hii ni Mungu atanisaidia. Lakini sasa wewe penye umekaa hapo unaona hii kazi ni yangu peke yangu. Mwezi huu jao tunaenda Kakamega. That is April. Kakamega County. Already programs are going on there. <coughs> this is not work to build houses for us or buy cars. This is work to win souls and the gospel to be spread. Are you going to bring 50 shillings and 20 here for that? I want people who have the burden for this ministry and people who have the burden for this work and people who want their bank accounts to be fat to stand in for this work. I have never seen somebody giving this church 1 million th uh, th shillings. But I believe God this the season because when an assignment is bigger God will give provisions. How have men like Apostle Kimani have people give 10 million to them to them for the kingdom work? Are they just men like us? Yeah. They are people like you who have stood in the gap and they have already convicted to serve God with their money. It is a year of focus on great assignment beyond our limitations. And I believe it's also a year of how God is going to bless us beyond our expectations. Are you feeling this burden in your spirit and saying, I will not let others come and steal this from us. Of course, church members, if you continue to linger, God will begin to open people from outside the church. Even heathens, they will bring to write checks to this ministry. And you will see checks being written in this ministry to do God's work. And yet you, who is a son and a daughter, a heir of the kingdom, will still remain in the same position. Before even that happens, can you take the opportunity? Begin to give for such kind of great assignment.